So a little more about how to navigate web work and how to submit answers. Um, at any time, you can jump back to this link that says homework sets to see what are the list of homework sets that are currently available uh, for people to do. Um, so for example, the first three homework sets for the course are called uh, arithmetic, PEMDAS, that's our order of operations, linear equations and inequalities, and compound inequalities. Uh, so for Math 095, that set of four are what you should be focusing on in the first week of the course, so from now until next Friday. Um, for today, we're going to do this together right now, let's jump back to, uh, together into this introductory assignment, zero intro WW. So this one um, just has eh, six little problems in it. Uh, and we're going to take the time together to do these six problems together because these problems are going to help us just understand how to enter answers into web work. The secret is these six problems will also count toward your web work total. Uh, so we're going to get you some six free web work points uh, together today. So let's jump into problem number one. So we can read more about this you know, at your leisure. It's a big paragraph, but it's an exercise in how do you enter answers into web work. It tells you a little bit about the different buttons that are over here in the navigation you can use to navigate around. Um, tells you how the preview button works um, and so forth. But we're going to jump down here um, and tell you a little bit about the answers to problems, so the correct answers to problems in web work, are things that you can see after an assignment is due. So once the due date passes on a web work assignment, um, you can jump in and actually see what the correct answers were. Uh, for that assignment. Um, obviously, while the assignment is still open, you can't see them. Um, when you enter a problem, sorry, enter an answer into web work, you just type it into the box that it provides. Um, and again, either check your answer or submit your answer. Um, or again, the preview button. So one of the things I'd like for you to do here before we go on is to play around a little bit with how to enter algebraic expressions into this box. So if I did something like x plus 2y, I'm going to click Preview. And this will be a place where you can see how WebWork interpreted the answer that you wrote, how it, what it, how it thought of x plus 2y as an expression. Um, obviously, there's not really much room for misunderstanding if it's that simple. But, and we'll talk about the order of operations a little bit later on today, once we start to worry about things like parentheses, about mixing operations of addition and multiplication, uh, exponents, that kind of stuff, um, for those, things can get more complicated. So, for example, um, I'm going to try this little experiment. If I type in, and eh, maybe I'll do this one. If I type in A divided by B plus C, like that, without any parentheses, uh, then the question is, how does web work actually interpret that? So what expression is that going to end up being. So if you're ever unsure, use this preview button. And so here is how WebWork interpreted what I wrote, a divided by b plus c, with no parentheses. It divided the a by the b, and it had the c out here separately. Right? So WebWork, just like any good mathematical system, follows the order of operations and rules of precedence when it interprets the expressions that you write in. Uh, so all of your algebraic expressions are going to be entered in through the keyboard and so using this preview tool is going to be important to make sure that you're saying what you mean. So check to make sure, based on what's on the page that you're, that you're writing down when you're working on problems on paper, um, that this reflects what you wanted. If instead of this, I wanted, I don't know, if I had wanted instead to have the B plus C all downstairs in the denominator, then that means that probably the way that I entered my expression was not the way that I wanted and I should go back in and, and try something else. So for that, discard this. For that, I would want to take the B plus C and group it with parentheses. So if I change that to have the parentheses around the B plus C, I click Preview again, and now this expression is showing up in the way that I was expecting it to. So anytime you're entering an expression of algebra and web work, before you click to submit your answer, definitely click to preview it first um, to make sure that web work is interpreting it the way that you want it to. Um, the one other quirk uh, with web work is how do you write exponents? So if I want to do, I don't know, x squared plus y squared. So I want to enter in this expression, x squared plus y squared. Then I need a way of telling web work that these twos are up in the exponents and are not just multiplied down on the same line with the x and the y. And the way to do it in web work is that an exponent is 
marked with a double asterisk. So that double asterisk, x double asterisk 2, is web work speak for x squared. So that takes a little bit of getting used to. Um, but that means that if I'm entering x squared plus y squared, I'll use x double asterisk 2 plus y double asterisk 2. Click to preview that. And sure enough, there's the expression that I was hoping to enter. Um, I think sometimes web work will also let you use the caret. Let me just check that. x caret 2 plus y caret 2. I put that in there. I don't think web work cares about white spaces, so the spaces I put in there were ignored. Um, and actually, the caret does also work uh, for exponents. Um, one thing you'll see in all of your web work assignments is that there's a little link off to the side of the assignment itself. It says, here's a list of functions and symbols that WebWork understands. Um, so that links you through to a quick, just a quick reference guide for how to enter in algebraic expressions and various functions inside of WebWork. Uh, so feel free to use that as a reference as well. But let's move off of this problem together by just typing the number 3 here and clicking Submit. That's just so we get the one point for having done the exercise uh, that we just did. Then for the next problem, I'm going to just choose next. And so then WebWork is giving us a few just introductory problems to help us evaluate some expressions. So we're going to talk later about the order of operations. So I'm just going to skip through and, and do these answers really quickly. 9 times 6 is 54. Uh, 4 times 2 is 8. And 54 minus 8 is 46. Um, if I put the parentheses around the 6 minus 4, as has been done here, that makes it a 2. And 9 times 2 times 2 is 36. If I put the parentheses here, um, 6 minus 4 times 2, doing the multiplication first, 6 minus 8. 9 times uh, 6 minus 8 is 9 times negative 2, which is negative 18. Click to submit those answers. So there were the three answers for the version of the problem that I got. Now, you might have gotten a problem with slightly different numbers in which case you might want to come back and, and redo this one a little bit later on today. Um, and then ditto, there's some more of these problems. Let's actually go forward to, I think it's problem four. Right, so let's jump to, uh, together forward to problem four. Because um, it's going to, we're going to go through this couple problems that ask us to enter in some algebraic expressions. So these are expressions that have variables in them. Something as simple as a plus b just entered in from the keyboard. That's going to be enough for us on problem number four. But any time we build an algebraic expression in web work, um, again, we have to be really careful about how we enter it in to make sure that we're saying what we mean. So submit your a plus b and get your points for that one. Um, but when you move to the next screen, now we've got a couple of new expressions that we want to enter in um, that are a little bit more complicated, that have a little bit more going on. So let me reflect this question back out to you. If I want to enter in the expression a plus 1 over 2 plus b, written in this way, um, then how do I want to enter that in with the keyboard? Right, so we have to remember parentheses because division would otherwise always take precedence over addition. So if I just wrote a plus 1 over 2 plus b without any parentheses, then the only division that would happen would be 1 divided by 2 here in the middle. And that would happen first, and then we would add a, and we would add b. But that's not what's meant by this expression. What's meant here is that the a plus 1 is grouped together. So there's a set of parentheses. The 2 plus b is likewise grouped together. And those additions need to happen first before the results are then divided. So using the parentheses to group the a plus 1 and the 2 plus b is how we're going to get the former to be in the numerator and the latter in the denominator. And you can imagine, likewise, for a plus b over c plus d down here in the bottom. If we don't include parentheses, then only b and c get divided, and the a and d are left for the end. That's not what this expression means. So we'll group those with parentheses first. Again, check the preview to make sure that you're saying what you mean. And sure enough, here is what we entered, and here's how WebWork interpreted what we entered, and that is what we intended. So we can click to submit those answers. And that gets me the points for problem number five. On this problem, we're just going to have two different expressions. The expression a on the top, which is a plus b over c, where b and c are divided, but a is not. And expression b, which is a plus b divided by c, where the sum of a and b are divided by c. So the question is, 
which expression is which. So if I were to write in web work a plus b over c without any parentheses, that gives me the first expression, expression a. So I'll put an a here. Likewise, if I group the a plus b with parentheses and then divide by c, that gives me expression b. What do you think this third expression, a plus b over c, with this extra set of parentheses, um, what's that going to give me? Expression a or expression b? Yeah. So if I click to check these answers first, it'll show me off the bat that two out of our five answers are incorrect, and that gives me the option to then go back and change it. Now, this is a problem where there's only two possible answers, so um, checking it once lets us then instantly get it right the second time. Um, notice that in our third example, the A plus B is grouped together with parentheses before it's divided by C, and this extra set of parentheses surrounds the whole thing which really doesn't do anything algebraically, right? Um, it's not grouping anything together to do something to it. It's just grouping the whole thing. Uh, and the most important grouping is the innermost grouping, which is the A plus B getting grouped together before it's divided by C. So that's why that comes out to B. Likewise, with this last expression, the outermost set of parentheses doesn't really do anything. It's the innermost, B divided by C, that gives us the clue that that was expression A. If I then click check again, now I see that I have all five correct, and I should submit and then I have the credit for problem six.